Teachings of Shatout Netto Internet Radio Blog Show. My name is Anpu Waset, and I am your host for tonight. And again, I say greetings to all of you in our live or tape broadcast listening audience. This is the Rec Ab Wisdom Teaching, Shetty Discipline of Shatout Netter. What will be shared on this show are the ancient philosophical and religious teachings from ancient Kemet, which lead to transformation of the heart and soul. Priests and priestesses of the Temple of Aset as well as Dr. Mawada Ashby, the Ma, and Dr. Karen Clark Ashby, Sebaja, will present the teachings which, when practiced, transform the heart. This transformation is one from mortal consciousness to eternal consciousness, from animal consciousness to spiritual consciousness, from consciousness of the physical body and mundane reality to consciousness of the body of light called the Aku, based upon the ancient African comedic tradition known as Shatout Netter. This show has been developed as a, me- as a means to assist you with the Unitarian practices which open the way to this mental transformation. We continue the weekly Saturday evening Rec App Wisdom teaching show. Approximately two months ago, a little more than two months ago actually, uh, we resumed our weekly Saturday evening show with the reflections of participants on our recent trip to Kemet. For those of you who are not aware, some of the members of the temple spent two weeks in Egypt visiting several sacred sites of the ancient land called again Kemet by its inhabitants. We returned to the States about approximately a couple of months ago, a little bit, about two and a half months ago. Over that time since we returned, those participants who were willing have shared their reflections of the pilgrimage with the listening audience. Last week we concluded the reflections of the members of the temple. Tonight we begin the reflections of Dr. Mawada Ashby, the Ma. Tonight's show will be a one-hour show and will provide an overview for two more talks that Sabai Ma will present regarding his reflections from the spiritual pilgrimage. The title of this new series of shows is called Reflections from the Spiritual Pilgrimage to Kemet, the Resurrection of Osar. Reflections from the Spiritual Pilgrimage to Kemet, the Resurrection of Osar. So duo, which means adoration, but we also use that same word to say thank you for joining us tonight. We hope that you enjoy tonight's discourse. For those of you who do not know about us, the Temple of Aset is dedicated to the dissemination of the universal teachings of spiritual evolution, which relate to the union of humanity and the union of all things within the universe. While we recognize the unifying principles in all spiritual and religious systems throughout the world, Our primary goal is to provide the wisdom of ancient spiritual teachings from the Unitarian culture of ancient Africa, which is known as Shetaut Netter. Shetaut Netter means hidden divinity. And with that, I am going to get the show started. We have a shorter period of time, so let's move right into it and get the show going. I have turned on the mic for Sabai Ma, and I say, Uja to you, Sabai, your microphone is on. How are you this evening? Hatep. Uja, greetings. Can you hear me? I can hear you very well. Okay, very good. Yeah, All of I you just, in the listening uh, audience, could you, could you hear Sabai Ma as well? Go ahead, Sabai, what were you saying? Tep? I was just going to say that I, I, I ran into some, some issues, but I just got done creating a little slide presentation for tonight, uh, and I sent you the, the link so you can look for that. I sent it to Sibaja so she can send it out also. And maybe you can put it in the uh, in the... Uh, is that the chat area? Perfect. Okay, so all the all of you who are listening in on the uh, listening audience for now, I'm going to send it to the Google groups first, and then I will send those to. Then I will load those up to the chat room. Uh, 
And while I do that, Sabai, I'm going to just turn the mic over to you while I get that going so that I can um, do that. Do it to you, first of all, though, for coming on and beginning a discourse about your reflections from the pilgrimage. It was the first time that we, the Temple of Aset, has made that, that pilgrimage. So um, like everyone who has been on the show before has pretty much said, we do all as a Unitarian community, we want to say do it to you and say vaja for um, facilitating and organizing, you know, such a an event. And we say do it to you all for that. Um, it was generally, it was um, uh, assuredly a memorable experience, and we do appreciate the time and effort that you all did in putting it together and tap. Yeah, do it for that. It was it was our, our our pleasure, even though it was a lot of a lot of hard work, uh, even putting it together. Uh, there was a lot of um, I, I was calling uh, in uh, in reference to our last conference where we discussed the metaphysics of the sun and Ra. Uh, I was just uh, as we moved closer to the trip time. Uh, I was recognizing uh, even back in March that. Uh, the the July, you know, the late June July area of the year was like a black hole. Now, a black hole is an object that has so much. It's like a sun, uh, object object that has so much mass that it causes the space time to warp around it. And so, I, I had I had mapped out several things to do for the year, and and the trip to to Kemet kind of everything uh, kind of started swirling around that. Uh, and uh, so, so now we're just getting caught up with uh, the, the rest of the plan for the year. So, but e- even with all of that, it was um, and and some of the troubles that we ran into, it was a pleasurable trip. And it was a, a hopefully worthwhile venture on, on many levels, on spiritual levels, on cultural levels, uh, on, on levels of of, uh, of cultural enrichment and and. Uh, a different level of understanding of ourselves as a culture, as a spiritual culture, and and uh, as a a spiritual or spiritually inclined group as well. So, I, I put the uh, I was gonna what I intended to do for the next uh, uh, perhaps three presentations, three Saturday evenings, is to go through a with the aid of a slide presentation, like I did with the the highlights of Shetty program, uh, you know, the earlier part of the year, to go through and show some things visually and discuss them, uh, so, you know, for more impact and for for even better recall. People who went when they see some of the pictures, they'll start recalling certain things, feelings as well as as thoughts and, and things that were said that were said and the hot sun that was meeting on us while we were there, and so on and so forth, uh, and you know, to help bring back the, the feeling and the the understanding uh, that it was to to be there. So I put that on the the pilgrimage to Kemet website that we had prepared before, and so the address for that is egyptianyoga.com forward slash trip to Kemet. Just the works trip to Kemet. And that will get you to to the the main site. Uh, I'm not sure if the menu is working yet. I'll get to fix that when we finish here. But the the page ID, or, or you go to EgyptianYoga.com forward slash trip to Kemet forward slash, and there's I guess a little difficult uh, question mark page underscore ID equals 261, and that's question mark, page, underscore, ID, equals 261, and that's the exact uh, place where this page is located. If the the menu uh, is not working when you get there, or otherwise you can look for your emails and you can get the, the direct link from there as well. So I'm going to go through to that page, and uh, I'm going to be... Uh, videotaping along with what I'm speaking. So, and this will be available 
on the same site and probably will add it to the Kemi University uh, uh, com forward slash TV uh, webpage also and the YouTube. So this will be available later. So uh, the, page. Link is, the link is working, Sabai. Okay, very good. It's in. For some reason, uh, it won't test on my... Uh... Okay, very good. <laughs> Excellent. The the technology we, we've had, so for some of you who are aware, we had some issues with the uh, the Kemi University website and we just uh, resolved this afternoon. So it's this is like an ongoing maintenance issue. Like the like you have to maintain your body, maintain your your health, uh, maintain your environment is the same thing. Okay, so very well. Uh, basically, um, it'll be the same way as I did it before. We have some. I have the slides that I want to discuss. I don't have all of the pictures. Uh, I think we took like hundreds and hundreds of pictures. And so I selected a few uh, from the main sites with uh, hopefully wonderful things to discuss and stimulate the mind and so on. Uh, and we're going to go through, uh, you know, the, the main sites that we, that we uh, found. And, uh, uh, you know, we don't have much time uh, today because I'm going to be traveling and all that kind of thing, but perhaps we can spend a little more time next time, uh, which will be in a, a couple of weeks from now. And uh, see, you know how we uh, we proceed from there to go through them, and try to. As you're going to see, we're going to try to go through all the main sites. We're going to show uh, images of the the routing, but let's go ahead and get started because your time is limited. Uh, I'm looking at the slide presentation on slide number one. Uh, images from the pilgrimage to Kemet, 2015 a trip led by Sebai Dr. Muada Ashby and Seba Dr. Jai Ashby. And behind that, that uh, picture was uh, essentially from the, um, technically it's the, the second day uh, that, that were the day after we arrived, or however you want to put it. It's, it's, anyway, the, the first main site that we that we went to see was we went to, to uh, the, the Giza Plateau, but where we found the the Great Sphinx and uh, the Great Pyramids, and we went to, in the evening uh, during the Sound and Light show, and that is what this picture is here. Uh, we had uh, uh, image of the moon also in the background uh, as it was uh, moving towards a full moon, uh, which occurred two weeks later uh, on our return to Cairo. Uh, but this was the essentially the first night, uh, and this was the the sound and light show where they were illuminating the the pyramids and the Sphinx Temple, the Valley Temple, and uh, you know this is just going to be an overview to because to go through all the little details of every single site and every single image would be too much for for this. Uh, uh, you know, for the, those who are interested, we have a, a four-hour uh, talk uh, on the the last. Uh, this will be a little different because it's going to be a little more visual, uh, but it's 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 more going to be over. It's going to be more of an overview as opposed to a, a more in-depth. Of course, for the in-depth, you have to go to the trip, but that's a different story. Uh, by the way, this site uh, also has information about a trip that we are currently. Uh, planning for next year, so if people are interested, they can uh, look at that and uh, uh, you know contact us for more information. It's currently in the works, uh, and uh, I, th I think the dates are set. Uh, but there's a couple of little details that are being uh, worked out. Okay, so this is a just very quickly the Giza Plateau. Uh, it, it's, it's actually a, a, a netter curve. Nedekert is a lower part, means lower part of heaven. And uh, so it's like a, a cemetery, uh, in a sense. The grounds are a cemetery, but not the, the temples or the, the pyramids. Those are not uh, mortuary instruments. They are, are instruments to help the process of transforming the personality to a divine quality. 
Now, I discussed in our lecture about Giza during the trip. And uh, this is recorded also, but has not been uh, placed anywhere. It will probably be reserved for, for those uh, as a special treat for those you know going on the trip. Uh, where I was discussing about the the nature of the pyramids, their measurements, and how they the Great Pyramid uh, actually uh, it measures out the northern hemisphere of the planet. So everything from the North Pole to the equator, uh, the the letter pi is in it. The letter phi, uh, the the harmonics of creation. But uh, along with that, uh, of course, everybody knows about the shafts that point to Orion, uh, the, the, or that point at a certain time in history, pointing to Orion uh, and, uh, and Sirius, and so on and so forth. As well as the, to the, we talked about the underground system of of waterways and tunnels. Uh, and how it, it has been found that the construction of the of the, the pyramids, the casing stones were of a different class uh, of limestone than the interior portion, and the lining of the interior uh, where people would walk uh, was of uh, which is which is known to be a radioactive conductant, and we discussed some of the things uh, that were being done uh, with that information. information. Uh, how the the water flood uh, going in and out of those tunnels beneath uh, would create uh, a certain kind of accumulation of life force energies uh, that could be harnessed inside the the pyramid, and uh, in likewise fashion, uh, you know, all those energies are not going to be used to to just to transform, to transform personalities, they can also be used to to charge the water itself. That would later be used for irrigation. Uh, you know, it would transform the water into a very uh, energy, high energy conductant uh, form, you know, full of second second energy that would lead to to a, a, a extremely healthy process for the entire population. So that's another aspect that we really didn't discuss too much there, but we discussed more of the the initiatic aspect, uh, more of the, uh, you know, the the personal higher consciousness. But this is really more of an issue for the entire country. Uh, I guess we'll we'll leave that slide there. There's, there's a lot more to say. The the temple that you see here, the Valley Temple, uh, was is it has stones that are anywhere from like 100 to 200 tons. And uh, these are you know, the maximum that can be moved today with modern cranes and modern technology is about 200 tons. And that, that would be like, say, uh, moving it from a dock of a ship to to a, a truck, a truck bed, uh, uh, you know, for, for sharp moves. What we see here is these are stones that are stacked on top of each other in a very specific and a very exact way, which which could not be done uh, today. So some of that energy could be used uh, for uh, moving these kinds of stones and and even larger, uh, you know, 500 tons, uh, 1,000 tons, uh, and so on and so forth. So there is much there uh, that can be discussed, uh, but suffice for now to say, uh, that that this was a civilization. This comes from a period before the dynastic period, a period when the society had already reached high culture and technology capacity. And so we'll, we'll go ahead and leave it there because we can say a lot more uh, about that. Uh, but we'll leave that for a another time. I'm going to move on to slide number two. Just to make sure everyone knows that uh, ancient Egypt is located in the northeastern quadrant of the continent of Africa. And here you can see, uh, I'm pointing on, on, on my slides to 
land that in ancient times used to be called Nubia, this today is called Sudan. And to the left of Egypt, is, you know, it's been in the news a lot in the last couple of years since the fall of Gaddafi and the, the attack by the United States and so on. North of Africa is Europe, and uh, to the east uh, is the, the Middle East. So we'll move on to slide number three. Now, slide number three has a image of what we just saw, uh, but a close-up of the country, the northeastern uh, quadrant of Africa, where, where Egypt is located. And it actually shows more or less our routing uh, that we took. Uh, first, we arrived in Cairo, which is in the, in the north. And, and it's also called Lower Egypt. And then we flew down to to Aswan. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure if they have flights directly to Abu Simbel anymore. Uh, I think most, mostly all the, the flights are going either to Luxor or to Aswan. Uh, we went to Aswan, and then from there, we visited Abu Simbel. And uh, we visited the the Temple of Aset, which is in the Aswan area, the, the Aswan Dam that created Lake Nasser. A, a, a horrible technological achievement that is that is destroying the Nile floods that, that have destroyed the Nile flood system, and, and it's just totally antithetical to to the natural order of the flow of the Nile, along with the Nile silt that was replenishing the land, and also the flood system that was used to charge the pyramids and charge the the other technologies that were created uh, in ancient Kemet. So anyway, from there we we went to the Kom Ombo Temple, uh, uh, essentially of, of Heru and Sebek. And this at this point we were on on a a cruise ship. So then we went to Edfu. Uh, where, which is the city of the Temple of Heru. And then we went to Luxor. We sailed up through now to Luxor. And uh, from Luxor, we had uh, several things to see. The Valley of the Kings, the, the Luxor Temple, the Karnak Temple, and uh, many other things uh, were there. From, from there, we we went to the city of Abdu, the city of Asar, the god Asar. Oh, I forgot. Uh, we, well, we're going to see in the slides. Uh, while at Aswan, we went to the Temple of Asar. I'm not sure I mentioned that. Uh, from Abdu, we went to visit, we came back for the south, we came to visit the Temple of Heteru. And then we returned to Luxor and took our flight back to Cairo. Uh, where well, we went to to visit uh, the Giza Plateau again, but this time during the day. And then we went to the Cairo Museum as well, and then we went to <clears throat> to Memphis. Well, uh, really to Saqqara, and that where where the Step Pyramid is, and and uh, the whole temple complex created by uh, uh, Imhotep. Then we went to visit the Cairo Museum. And, and uh, we visited also the Coptic Museum as well. I should mention, mention that there are several sites that we did not see. We did not go to to Alexandria, uh, which is another spot uh, that was mostly uh, popular and important in the Greek period. But there, there are still some interesting things there to see. There's a, a massive library and a museum and things of that nature. Uh, we didn't see uh, some of the other major pyramids. Uh, we did not see the, the city of Akhenaten. Yeah, that's in, in Middle Egypt. Uh, the, so there, there are several things that we did not see. But the trip that we did take was a kind of whirlwind tour, uh, as you, Anku, probably will, will agree. It was, it was packed and, and maybe a little too packed, but it had sufficiently uh, enough. Uh, another thing that we could have seen uh, we we didn't go to Memphis itself, where you have the uh, the uh, 
this fantastic, massive uh, statue of Ramses. Uh, I believe it's something like a thousand, a thousand uh, tons, <clears throat> and it's on its side. It's so large that the the authorities wanted to move it to a better location to create a um, uh, a kind of museum with it. And so the engineers came over and said, "Okay, yeah, we can move it. We'll have to cut it in pieces." Uh, yeah, because we don't have any any way to 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 do it, and so they said, "No, we we better not do that." So they just made the the museum around it, and uh, you can see pictures of this. I don't have any pictures here, but because we didn't go, uh, but you can see it online. It's it's just a massive. And I went once, uh, you know, to the area. It's uh, just just to you know, the, the head alone is as as big as. As, as our house, which is like a, a you know almost two thousand square feet, so it gives you an idea of how massive this is. It gives you an idea of what the trip uh, was from the standpoint of the routing, and I uh, just want to give an idea. Of, there were several things that we could have seen, several things, and and when you go to Egypt, <clears throat> Egypt, you have to to plan it well, and you have to. You know, the more time you spend, the more you can see, and the more in a qualitative way. Uh, other, otherwise, you go more times so that you can take it in more, you know, the next time. So moving to slide number four. And uh, here is another picture of the uh, Giza, uh, which, is, which is kind of this pretty slide number one. You know, I have it labeled as slide number one because it's like the, the first uh, thing that we actually went to do. And here are some of us... Uh, uh, in the group sitting, uh, and this is an open sky, uh, and the the Sphinx is illuminated. The directly in front of the Sphinx is the Sphinx Temple, and these are stones that were taken out of the Sphinx enclosure where the Sphinx is. So all the these stones come; they were were originally around the Sphinx itself, and so the the Sphinx image was created by cutting the stones away from around it. Essentially, uh, the the pyramids behind uh, they uh, the the they use limestone, but the granite that was used to line the interior uh, came from Aswan, where we're going to see uh, in a few minutes. So I'm going to move on from there. This is the same image that we saw uh, at the beginning. But without the uh, the text in front of it, this is a picture of the the same, uh, but with a, a little bit of uh, of better lighting. I was able to do a few little tricks, uh, but this was at night also. Now we went to to Aswan. This is I'm looking at uh, the slide number seven, and it's numbered number four. This is. Um, one of the the exciting things that one can do this is the the massive uh, Aswan Dam, and we are looking here on the south side where the accumulated waters have created a, a huge lake that they call Lake Nasser. Now, in the distance, straight ahead, is a a essentially south of this area is is uh, Nubia or ancient Nubia, and what we're looking at to the left of the picture is an image of the lake, and the lake uh, essentially covered over uh, just hundreds and hundreds of square miles of area that used to be uh, open area and inhabited. The, the, the Nile used to run through it, but it was open area. People lived there, and they were called Nubians. Uh, and they were forced to move when the lake was created. And also, it flooded many archaeological sites, many temples uh, on the Nubian side. And these were, were temples that were uh, created uh, by the ancient Egyptians when when they, they were uh, connected uh, with uh, Nubia. And we had some Nubian kings who, who were, were ruling Egypt, uh, and it was just one contiguous uh, country, uh, you know, 
Cush and uh, or Nubia and uh, and Kemet. And uh, the distance on the far end of the picture, there's an, an image of of a temple. This is a a a, a Nubian temple, a Kalasha. Uh, and one can go visit there as well as sites that we do not go. You know, time issues and and more expense and things of that nature. Uh, but just to give an idea of of what we're looking at, this is the what is called a high dam. There was a a first dam. Uh, this is from ni- like 1967. There was a, a first dam which was created by the British when they had had uh, colonized Egypt, and that that um, dam was flooding the the sites. Uh, partially, uh, part of the year, and uh, but this this dam was a, a complete, you know, a complete uh, damming of of the, uh, the the whole area and and inundated, just really inundated and and then raised the uh, the uh, the level uh, of the the Nile. So that's the high dam. Now going to slide number eight. Uh, which is numbered as number five. We're looking at a quarry uh, in Aswan, and this is uh, one of the quarries where they they carved the the, the special granite, the pink granite that was used uh, in temples. It was used in in uh, the lining of the interior of the the walkways of the, the Great Pyramid. Uh, and here is uh, uh, Sarasadna when he was making a, a measurement. We had a, a Geiger counter that I took with us uh, because I wanted to to verify the the question or the issue of the radioactivity of the the pink granite. And it was hard to find, uh, like in, in all these open areas, it was hard to find uh, a specific area, areas where where there was uh, uh, you know a clear indication of the radioactivity and uh, we're we're talking about a low level radioactivity uh that if if used in a proper way is not harmful to to human life uh but if it is used improperly or if it's collected in a proper way uh that kind of thing it, it could be uh, harmful. Well, anyway, what you're seeing here in the in the background is the a a, a huge obelisk. Uh, <clears throat> it's called the fallen obelisk or the broken obelisk, and it's on its side, and it shows uh, that they were cutting it. They were in the process of cutting it, uh, and it it has some cracks. So they they theorized that it cracked, so they left it in place. Uh, anyway. The this shows where the items came from, and this is several like a seven eight hundred miles away, and this is something that that cannot be done today, which is to carry a a uh, an item that is that is more than two hundred tons to carry it more than a few feet, and here is these are these are items that were several hundred tons. Uh, that were carried great distances, hundreds of miles, and over over ranges, ranges, mountain ranges, and things like that. And uh, it so happened that um, here's Asar Setna who was doing the, the testing of several spots, and he found a spot uh, that showed clear indications of of high uh, radioactive content or radioactivity. And so, so that that issue was was proven, uh, you know, by us firsthand. Uh, and I think uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if uh, Sarah Kepper was able to take a, uh, a a GPS reading, but in any case, we this lot that doesn't move, and there's several pictures of this on the net. Uh, so I don't think there's any problem in us being able to find exactly uh, the spot, you know, if we go there again. But it wasn't really to to go there again, uh, you know, for that purpose. It was to prove the point, uh, and also to see it, where we can find it 
uh, elsewhere. Uh, but the problem is that some of these areas are so have been so exposed to the elements, and uh, because some of these are, these these items are uh, or were in enclosed temples uh, and resonating with certain kinds of of architecture. Uh, and what I mean by resonating is that uh, you can have a radiation, and that is going to hit a, a wall in front of it at a certain angle, and it's going to radiate back, and it's going to, you know, that kind of uh, arrangement. Certain harmonics of the temple, things of that nature. Uh, well, anyway, that is what uh, Sarasetha was doing here. Uh, and uh, you can see how in the rest of the, the image, uh, other areas that were cut out, that, that had stones cut out from them. Uh, and so it was very interesting seeing uh, where it was done, and also to find some dolerite stones, which are stones that are harder than granite, uh, that could be used for for polishing granite or for for chipping it uh, into a shape that you want. Uh, so all that was was very fascinating, and for its implications uh, to what it means for the 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 the, the other aspects of the teaching. So to move to slide number nine, which is also labeled as number six. Uh, this was our our next major stop, uh, and this is why this is where, uh, as I, I was listening to some of the other aspirants as they were talking, uh, uh, you know, we we came in to this area. The, the buses are behind the mountain, and this is Abu Simbel we're looking at now, uh, and this is the the front, you know, facing the sun facing the, uh, the eastern horizon. So the, the buses came from behind the mountain, parking areas behind the mountain. And so we were walking, uh, you're facing the picture, we, we were walking, coming in from the left side. Uh, and I was uh, uh, leading the, uh, the, the group, uh, and I told everyone to, to try your best to, to look down. <laughs> I told everyone to try their best for, for the, to have the greatest impact, to look down and to hold hands and to, to uh, you know, we would lead everybody and just look at everybody's legs, everybody's feet. And I, I, I saw that some people cheated. Uh, I was one of them. <laughs> it was hard to resist, so <laughs> We should ask this question. We should ask those who did not cheat versus those who cheated. What what was their experience? And, and see, <laughs> because the, the the experience of um, of uh, of cheating also has its um, you know the the anticipation and and the little bits that you get each time you step. Uh, that that's a kind of that's one kind of experience. Uh, uh, but but my. Um, well, when I when I did it the first time, uh, I was uh, I had read about that and, and other people's experiences, and and I I tried to do that, and I think I successfully did that. Uh, I was following the uh, you know the guide that I had at the time, and uh, and then I turned and it it uh, takes your breath away, as they say. It's uh, awesome, uh, and then when you when you do the the procession into it from directly ahead. Uh, that's another awesome experience. So, so the the, the one uh, and it's called the, the reveal. Uh, when you when you reveal uh, uh, an image or reveal a teaching or reveal uh, you know something that is concealed, uh, and the you know, just for it to have a, a full kind of Impact, uh, and so that—that's what was uh, what was being sought after—a kind of impact uh, that would leave a a powerful impression. Uh, and then, and that—that's even without. Um, the thing at this point, we really did not talk about it too much. Maybe we talked about it a little bit on the bus ride uh, to there, uh, but we. I think we had a lecture about it the, 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 that evening. Uh, or the, I believe, or the day after, that kind of thing. But uh, 
this is the the temple of of Amun at Abu Simbel, created by by Ramses the second, uh, Ramses the Great, uh, and uh, this is a, a temple that inspired Mount Rushmore. It is a a, a temple where where Ramses gives us a uh, Ramesu, uh, the child of, of Ramses, uh, the child of Ra, uh, gives us a, a he and, and the priests and priestesses who created this gives it gave us the, the first major teaching that we discuss on the trip, which is in uh, the next slide, slide number ten, uh, which is also number number seven. This is uh, in the interior of the Abu Simbel Temple. And here, what we are looking at is, uh, this is, this is one, of, one of the, the, uh, the it's, it's a, a kind of side room, a kind of, uh, of a worship room, if you will. And, and this is, uh, these are carvings on the interior wall, it, it, it gives a sense of like a cave because the, the temple is unusual. It's cut into a mountain. And so you go into the mountain as if you're going like into a mine, uh, you know, that kind of thing. Well, here, uh, Ramses, Ramesu, is giving adorations to to several netadu, several gods and goddesses. And there's one peculiar one uh, here, uh, on the far left, this one is um, the image, of the personality of the far left, who is holding two uh, oil jars in his hands, and he is kneeling. Uh, that personality is Ramesu himself, Ramses himself, and the personality in front of him uh, that he is making an offering to. Uh, who has a, a a circle above his head, a, a sun disk essentially above his head. Uh, that personality is also Ramesu or Ramesses. And however, the the headdress uh, denotes that this is the the solar aspect of Ramesses, meaning that this is his higher self. And uh, this is a, a fantastic teaching that, that we had uh, much discussion about uh, during our, our time. That this is one of the special teachings of this particular temple. And many different temples have specific, you know, wonderful teachings that, that were concentrated on. This is one of the ones from this temple. There, there were a few others, but this is one of the main ones. And... And uh, I asked them, I remember asking everyone when we had the meeting, if they could stand to create a divine image of themselves as they look, as they appear today, and could they worship that and see the higher glory in that? And several people had difficulties with that idea, with that thought of of seeing, and it's because... uh, so many of us feel so downtrodden or degraded that it's comfortable to think, oh, there's some higher self in some abstract way someplace else. Uh, and uh, and uh, it's, it's, the higher self is something that is that is not me. It's something other than me. That this this uh, thing which is, has a screwed up mind and, and a constant and, and screws up all the time uh, or it's too fat or it's too this or it's too that. Uh, or just the, the disgusting aspect of being a human being. And there, there are some wonderful aspects where there are also some disgusting ones, like going to the bathroom or eating. It's disgusting. But even with all those things, when we come to understand, even excrement is a, 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 a manifestation of the divine in a higher context. And so therefore... Even with all of our maladies, all of our foibles, all of our sins, whatever you want to call it, to realize that there is a higher nature 
underneath all of that, and that if we are able to to forgive ourselves, to to see ourselves in a higher light, uh, then uh, we can become that higher light. Now, there, there's much more involved in that, uh, but I will just leave that for there for now. Uh, uh, just to to mention that the other images further down the line. Uh, those are images of Ramses making adorations to Ra, making adorations to Heru, making adorations to the goddess, and, and so on, so on, and so on, and so forth. But this is the big point of this of this teaching that he sees himself as one of them. In fact, he sees himself as them, and that is how how uh, the, the Pharaoh, the Pera is a ideal human being, and that is how how an ideal human being should see themselves, uh, regardless of of all their 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 lower nature or their their troubles or their failures. Uh, the other great teaching of this temple is is the the warrior, the Matian warrior. Uh, uh, this temple recounts the the story of the how. Ramses uh, uh, beat the the Hittites uh, uh, in, a, in a great battle, but the the battle is um, is not important. The historicity of it, the the idea that he he defeated them with the help of Amun, and he established order. That is the the key. Uh, he he was a fighter for Ma for for truth, and that is what gave him the purity to be able to look at himself in a higher way, in a higher order. And that is the, the teaching, the, the, one of the two main teachings of this temple, to see yourself as a, as a divine personality, to see your, your, yourself as that higher nature. And gradually the, the lower nature sloughs off, and what is left is the higher. Okay, so I, I think pretty good. We went through, through 10 slides. The The other... Just to give a preview, uh, now we go to to, to the, the the wonderful uh, temple of a set. Well, uh, the slides, I think eleven through like tw- like uh, twenty or so, they're kind of series. So I'll just play the series. You know, you just play it. Um, this is a picture of us on the boat. On slide number eleven, uh, label number eight, and uh, approaching the temple. And then I have pictures of the actual approach in a in a slide series. So series slide twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and then in sixteen we actually go inside the the temple itself. Uh, but I'll go ahead and leave it there, and we'll pick up uh, at slide uh, number uh, eleven uh, next time, and we'll we'll start from there with the temple of a set. What's up? Tap. You're listening to the Temple of Aset, the teachings of Shatoutnet or Internet Radio Block Show. My name is Ampu Aset. I am your host for this show and for this for this show and tonight's show specifically. My guest tonight has been Dr. Mawada Ashby. Sabai Ma provide his reflections from the spiritual pilgrimage to ancient to the ancient sites of Kemet that the Seema Institute of Yoga went on earlier this year, June 20th through July 4th, approximately. Tonight, Sabai Ma has presented the beginning of his reflections and has provided an overview of what uh, appears to be two more shows that he will be doing in the near future. We'll get back to you and let you know when those next two shows will be. However, Tonight's show was one that provided the introduction to his reflection based upon the visit. Feel free, um, until our next show comes about, to send me, Ampu Waset, any type of questions that you may have for Sabai Ma about the spiritual pilgrimage to Kemet. We will be compiling all of those questions and probably answering those in one show. It may be a show of questions or the questions may be answered within the context of the reflections themselves. One of the questions presented tonight 
or earlier was answered tonight about the uh, Netzekert and the Potomacet, the Sphinx, and Giza being the lower part of heaven. That was answered within the context of the uh, reflections provided by Shabbat Ma. So, with that said, I want to say do it to you, Sabai, for uh, coming on the show and beginning the introduction to the reflections from the spiritual pilgrimage. The pictures do bring back... Go ahead. If if you have one more question, we can try to deal with it uh, in a few minutes. Um, There was... um, I'll have to pull that one up. And while I do that, I do want you to know that even though I was one of the cheaters, the <laughs> at Apple Symbol, the effect was still like tremendous. It was even cheating, I said to myself, Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? Because <laughs> I didn't look I looked up to cheat, but I didn't look up to cheat if that makes any sense. Um, I remember right. stumbling a bit and kind of my head kind of went up and I said, okay, well, that's my excuse to look. And I said, oh, my goodness, are you kidding me? I mean, it was still just beyond anything I could have imagined. And even though I've seen the pictures before of Abu Simbel, pictures don't do it justice by any, any, any stretch of the imagination. It's a, mm-hmm. 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 I think I pull up a question here from Stephen. That's when I was pulling up. That's when I was looking for it. Me. Okay, so this question is from Sabaima. If I remember correctly, Manetho mentioned in his historical records that Kemet was once ruled by the gods and goddesses. This makes me think and ask uh, were the gods and goddesses ruling in their zoomorphic or composite forms? Looking in nature today, we don't see hawk-headed men or snake-headed women, but could this uh, have been possible during the evolution of the physical body, or were the gods and goddesses depicted in these ways to infer certain mystical meanings? Uh, and hit that for a question, uh, uh, Dua. Uh, uh, in, indeed. Uh, there is, for those of you who don't know, you can go to the, the book African Origins, and that's where I think I talk mostly about Manetho and the history of Manetho. Uh, and uh, also I mentioned in a previous presentation that I went to Italy uh, to the Turin Museum and I saw the, the uh, Turin Papyrus, which corroborates Manetho's history. Uh, the Palermo Stone also corroborates the history. These are periods of ancient Egyptian history where at this particular time of uh, the gods and goddesses uh, was the time when the the pyramids, the great pyramids were created, when the Asarian in Abdu was created. We're talking uh, anywhere from uh, 20 to, to 40,000 uh, B.C. That's the, the time period we're talking about. Now, going to the, to the answer to the question, the, the iconography of the gods and goddesses uh, is metaphorical. Uh, it relates to the energies that they manifest. So if an energy is hawk-like, uh, then that will be depicted uh, in a hawk-like fashion. Uh, and... If the energy is leonine, it will be the, with leonine aspects, with lion, like a lioness or a lion, like Shu or Tesnu, uh, you know, that kind of thing. But you also notice that uh, most of the gods and goddesses, even they, though they may have a composite form, meaning a human body with a, a lion or something of that nature, that they also have uh, a depiction that is uh, fully anthropomorphic. Uh, and so what is being given uh, is that these are the netadu are cosmic forces or energies that em- emanate from netter, and this is a, actually a, a huge theme uh, that we're going to be talking about in the the new Temple of a Set class uh, that we're that we're starting now in the Kim University. Uh, it re- relates to you know so so many in depth metaphysical 
and, and mystic uh, philosophical uh, issues uh, of how to to learn to feel uh, and manipulate those energies uh, so as to create uh, an enlightened consciousness for yourself, and that that is really what it's what it's all about. So these, if you see a image of a, div- a divinity uh, with a hawk head, or say one of the aspects of Heru, then you know that you are dealing with hawk type energy, uh, the energy that that can fly, energy that has a a a sharp edge vision. Uh, energy that is uh, solar in nature because the hawk flies high uh, into the sky uh, so that its, uh, its prey cannot see it. Uh, so it, it's, it, it's, it's kind of in a stealthy, uh, aloof uh, way, uh, energy uh, and waiting to strike. So all this, this is um, uh, involved uh, as, as well as from the standpoint of the understanding of the the hawk energy of Heru, see if it's the hawk energy of Ra, uh, or the hawk energy of of Sokar, uh, it relates different aspects of the teaching, different aspects of the energy of, of the hawk energy, uh, and that's something you know to be discussed at a different time. But there, there's a hawk trinity also. Uh, and also there's there, there's the Sokar, who is the hawk of the night. There's there's the Ra. Uh, it, it was the, the right eye, the fiery eye, and Heru, who is the left, who who is more like the mind, the sharpness of the mind. Uh, and then you also have the the hawk energy of the goddess, uh, which is a set. So there there are many aspects, uh, but essentially, the the metaphorical teaching is actually a front for a mystical wisdom that leads to enlightenment. If you understand all the interconnections, all the interactivity uh, mythologically, and then to discover those aspects within yourself physically and mentally, uh, and to have a sa, uh, kind of like experience, a kind of understanding and feeling, uh, then those energies become alive in oneself. Uh, And uh, if they become alive in yourself, you may say, oh, this person, uh, he was, he's a lion. That's that's a metaphor. You you don't expect the person to, you know, expect to see a a, uh, a lion walking down the street with the name of George. What it means is that 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 energy is, uh, is running through that person and he, and he acted in that way at that time. And and, uh, he did what a lion, he, he, he approached that situation the way a lion would. Uh, another example I used to give uh, previously was, uh, you, you know, is dogs and well, cat, cats and dogs. You know, men are usually referred to as dogs when they are lusting after women, uh, and and cat and women are 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 referred to as cats when they're fighting. You know, cat fights. But you don't see them with you know you you see you, you say claws but you don't actually see claws they're they're nails and they're but it, it's uh, the energy that is running through them at the time and it's a deg- at that point it's a degraded energy that we're talking about there if you're talking about that who is the, the cat goddess now that's something else okay so that's uh, just a little bit of, of an answer on that there's a lot more to it but that's uh, if what go to the 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 Shetty the wisdom of Shetty series for more on that. What's up? Dulas Sabai, that um analogy was excellent, was very, very good, especially the about the men and women, men being dogs, women being cats when they are men when men are chasing after women and women when they are having disputes with each other. Um, great analogy that I think people listening in could easily relate to because of how prevalent those type of examples are, you know, in this culture. Dua, for coming on tonight and and starting this presentation, especially given all that you're going to be, all that you are currently doing and that you have coming up as well. Um, big Dua to you for that and um, may everything that you do in the next 
you know, two, three, four weeks with the Kimmy University and everything else, you know, be as fruitful and productive as you'd like for it to be. Do it again for coming on and starting this Reflections Up. Okay, do it. What's up? On behalf of the Temple of Aset, the teachings of Shatout Netter, this is Ludan Puwaset, thanking and saying do it to all of you for joining us tonight um, for this first introductory show. From Sabai Ma as he begins to present his reflection from the 2015 spiritual pilgrimage to the ancient sites of Kemet. We will let you know when he will continue with part two of these reflections from the trip. Until then, we leave you with the what with the Hekau and Chant of Osar, Dua Asar Unifanetara, Dua Asar Head Abdu, Dua Asar Nejeta, Dua Asar Sutinhe. Adoration to Asar, as pure existence, adoration to Asar, Lord of the Kingdom of Abdu, adorations to Osar, Kingdom of Eternity, Lord of Forever, and adorations to Osar, King of Eternity. Peace and blessings to you all. We'll be in touch with you with information about this next show in this series. Except everyone.